Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome back to another video. I just wanted to first off say happy St. Patrick's Day or happy me day. And I hope everyone has their green leprechaun looking outfits today. And if you guys see this after the fact, St. Patty's Day is every day for me, right? Because I'm Patrick. But anyhow, today we're going to be talking about physical penetration testing and what are some techniques that people use if you're a physical penetration tester. So stay till the end, learn a little bit, and let's jump into the video. Remember, like, comment, and subscribe. Let's get to that 100K in 2024. Thank you. All right, folks, so I have a little presentation here that we're going to go over a physical penetration test. And since today is St. Patty's Day, I was talking to a friend and we're probably going to try to social engineer and do some physical stuff today just for shits and giggles. And obviously to a limit, right? We don't want to do anything crazy. But what are some physical and I actually have this as the PPP physical penetration testing uh, presentation. So hopefully you guys find this informative. If there's anything that I missed that you know, that you would add, put it in the comments. I would love to learn and, and, and see what's up. So let's just go ahead and go through this. This is a presentation I made when I present uh, some, some physical stuff. So I had to dig it up, so uh, I found it. So what is the agenda, right? The introduction of what physical penetration testing is, you know, what, phys what physical penetration testing tools that we use, different kinds of techniques and stuff like that. So the number one thing that I always do, right? <laughs> I put map the joint out or map out the joint, map the place out, right? So if you want to, you know, start by mapping all the possible entries, maybe you can go to Google, maybe you can use Google Maps, maybe you can hone in, maybe you can do a drive by, maybe you can just drive into the facility or drive near the facility to see, scope the place out, you know? So start by mapping all the possible entries into the business to identify unsecured entry points, right? Attackers, you as a penetration tester in your organization, often find hidden or unguarded entries, right? To gain access into the building. This is stuff that I can show you guys how to do and it's really, really fun. By mapping doors, windows, and fire escapes or fire exits. I, I should have said fire escapes because I guess in New York, we use a lot of fire escapes. But uh, you can begin to define the premise, right? Like we now know what's going on. And now you just need to secure them, you know, from a possible attack. Once you exploit this, you can give this report. When you give the report to the client, you can tell them how to, you know, secure it, right? So that's the number one. So the number two thing that we can do is lock picking, right? I, I should have actually had my lock picking kit here so I can showcase it, but it's in my book bag and I forgot. But even today, most of most of the effective ways to pass through doors, exits, is by lock picking techniques, right? You can do this at a lot of us uh, conferences. They have lock picking villages. So if you're interested in that, go check those places out. When you go to a conference, see if they have a lock picking event and check that out. It's super cool. It's really neat. So the main reason for this is the you know mechanical locks have never evolved, right? It's a mechanical thing. You stick your thing in, you stick your pick in, and you can just maneuver the mechanisms. And 99% of the time, well, sometimes 100% of the time, you can get through, right? So the mechanical locks that haven't evolved over much time, and it can easily be picked with a little bit of training. And the training you can get from you know, places like DEF CON or B-Sides or wherever you could, you know, maybe Hackspace CON, you know, coming up, if you guys are joining that, maybe they have a lock picking village. I'm not even sure, but maybe. So the next thing here is most business today use, you know, electronic, uh, electrical magnetic things like, so, you know, there's ways to bypass that too. You can, if it's misconfigured, you can actually blow some air under a door to click off a sensor and you can go ahead and get through that way. So lock, so let me continue with this. So most businesses today, so they, they use these locks to eliminate the risk of lock picking. You know, however, scanning, duplicating cards used by these, you know, electronic uh, locks require a, an amount of effort. So, you know, we can use, for example, the flipper, you can clone badges, you can do, you know, you can bypass that as well, but it's probably not as as easy as lock picking. 
So the next thing here is data or access and sensitive data, right? So what does this mean? Simply trying to take pictures, you know, of employees' computers if you're inside of an organization from the outside of the office. So a lot of a lot of organizations, like I've been into, you know, especially like the fancy ones, they have like glass, right? So their office is like glass and we can see right through, we can see the user, right? So we can zoom in and take pictures of stuff on their desk. We can do stuff like that. So that's why keeping that stuff out of plain sight is definitely more secure, right? So, you know, you just want to make sure you protect your data from any, any bad guys or anyone. And everyone has... You know, everyone has that access if you're inside of a network or inside of an organization. And if you fire that person, if they want to be an asshole, they can leak that data and be malicious. So just be careful. So the next one here, we can test server rooms, MDFs, IDFs, etc. So servers represent the most critical part of any network or any system, right? And this gives us a high level of attention when it comes to security. Maybe you have file servers, maybe you have, you know, physical servers with IP addresses on them. Like I'm a, you know, I, I'm guilty of that. When I was a server admin, when I was a network admin, I would just put information, stick it on the server so I know when I go into the server room where it is. So if an, if an attacker gains access to that server room, your entire network is compromised, right? So this is saying if I try to, you know, if you have a code or something like that, and if I we'll get into shoulder, shoulder surfing and all that stuff in a bit, we can just get into that server room, we can plug in, we can take over your network, and it'll be a bad day for you. So which has access to an attacker can, well, with access, you know, with that kind of access, an attacker can infect your system, completely disable it, steal most sensitive data. So maybe they can take the data and put it onto a thumb drive, take it off the server and, and move it and you know, do some crazy stuff or just be a dick. <clears throat> Dumpster diving. I actually did this a few times earlier in my uh, fun physical pen testing career. And it's literally what it says, right? <laughs> diving into dumpsters and looking for sensitive data, paper. And sometimes you find some interesting things. I remember I went dumpster diving and I found tapes that they thought it wasn't working when they sent it to Iron Mountain and Iron Mountain is a, you know, date, data offsite backup. I don't know what they're doing today, but that's what it was for us. And some of the tapes weren't working for one of our um, backup solutions. And they threw it out. And uh, yeah, we were able to get some fun stuff off of that. <clears throat> so never, you know, shred it. Make sure you shred it and uh, don't just th throw it in the garbage, you know. So as the name suggests, dump, dumpster diving involves looking through the business or its employees trash in search of any information that can be used further to further penetrate the business defenses, right? Uh, paper documents, books, manuals, maybe playbooks. or you know, this is all, you know, uh, electronic now, but you never know. Invoices, bank statements, any kind of stuff that would attract an attacker, you know, to collect and use it against you. You know, just be careful. So break RFID tags, you know. So radio frequency ID tags can often use the secure, <clears throat> can often use secure uh, portable resources, right? So if you have a flipper, you can, you know, do some stuff with a flipper. Ha uh, I think it's called hack ID. This is portable things that can, you know, break RFID frequencies. So RFID RFID tags can be identified in information from the retrieved by using RFID tool, tools, right? So just be careful with that. Another one here is, is always fun, right? Gain physical access by tailgating, right? So meaning I want to, you know, I want to hold open the door because I want to be a nice guy with my suit. And meanwhile, I'm just going into your organization and tailgating. And that's another technique. So tail, tailgating is a technique used to pass through secure entries where only authorized personnel are allowed to enter. Attackers achieve this by following the person passing through the entrance without any credentials. So, you know, you can be the pizza man, you can be the the Chinese man, you can be the 
whatever man you want to be, you're going to be the elevator man. And I'm here to fix your elevator. I'm here to fix your printer. I'm here to fix your door. Can you open your door? And let's, you know, whatever you want to be that day, uh, you can be and, you know, tailgate your way into an, an organization. So another one here, uh, I actually have this a part of my uh, little hack five kit. Test the network jacks, so RJ, RJ45 jacks, right? So you can, you know, another important step is the physical penetration test and methodology is check active network jacks. So maybe you're inside the network. We got physical access because we pen, we tailgated into your infrastructure or your your building. And now we can start plugging into the jacks. Maybe we can sit in the lobby. Maybe we're sitting in a room. You know, we find an open jack. We plug our laptop in. We see if we get access, right? So, yeah, often o overlooked, unsecure, active network jacks can be exploited by plugging in, you know, a wireless rogue access point. Or we can just plug in a laptop. We can plug in something that's listening in uh, on the wire at the packet level, right? So we can just get that data and then, you know, shift through the data and see if we get anything that's uh, important for us, right? And another one I have on here is shoulder surfing. I always have problems saying that, shoulder surfing. It's a tongue twister for me. So what does this mean, right? Just what the name implies, the attacker evolves simple by observing an employee's computer to pick up their usernames, passwords, intellectual property, sensitive data, and so much more. So to test this attack, you know, the penetration tester will actually simply observe, you know, they can pick someone out of the list, see if who, who looks a little vulnerable, and we can see if we can get some login credentials when they're, you know, when they're typing. This, at least for me, was always a little challenging because, you know, I'm not a fast typer. And when, if, you know, if someone's a fast typer, it's hard for me to really look. But, you know, this one never really, <laughs> I, I was never good at this one because, you know, it's not something I really enjoy. But on top of the shoulder surfing, right, what you can also do is plug in something like a rubber ducky or a ghetto rigged rubber ducky, write a script and plug it in to a USB port if, on the desktop and have them, you know, log in or, or use some kind of, uh, you know, when they use their credentials to authenticate to something, then obviously we can use that as a key logger. So that's things I've done more stuff like that. But uh, yeah, so that's another thing. So never just also, you know, don't just plug in a USB that you find in your parking lot because that might be just that. So another one here, which is probably one of my favorites, social engineering the employees, right? So social engineering is the practice of extracting sensitive information from employees, you know, at any given time or just giving us, the penetration testers, conf uh, confidential company information. So these kinds of attacks require strong social skills. <clears throat> I don't think I have the best social skills. No, I'm just kidding. But I like to talk, right? I can bullshit. I can shoot the shit. And so, and you can just talk to anyone, you know, and their grandma outside in a parking lot or outside of an organization and try to gather information. I've gotten passwords. I've, you know, shot this shit because I like to talk about hockey, as everyone knows, or whatever. And if I see someone that, you know, looks a little sporty, I'm like, yo, like, just shoot, chop it up. And I don't talk like a nerd, so that even helps more. And, you know, in fact, it's been reported that 98% of cyber attacks rely on social engineering as an entry point into any business system, right? So it's not only about all these hacking tools and all these tools. The human element is the weakest link at all time. And it's going to continue to be like that. You can do all the social... Uh, you can do all the security awareness training, but at the end of the day, you know, if you're in finance, if you're in a different department, you're just going through that training just because you have to, not really to retain that information. And if you are, put it in the comments and uh, let's have a chat because I want to give you a big thumbs up. All right, so let's see the next one here. Uh, so that, that was the last one. So I should have actually known that, but I don't, I don't look at this uh, every day. So some tools used that we can utilize, right? So there, there's so many, right? Like I, I should have put my flipper on there, but this is before I had my flipper. But like HD cameras, binoculars, you know, I, I've done that, you know, I've been at a spot trying to zoom in, uh, 
radio devices, wireless access points, antennas and receivers. So, you know, flippers, there's other different kinds of air spray, you know, like uh, compressed air to try to, you know, get in lock picking tools, lock picking uh, uh, kits, you know. So, yeah. So the next one here, how long does an actual physical penetration test take, right? So this varies, obviously. It all depends on how much information you're trying to get into. But most penetration tests or most physical penetration tests takes up to two to six weeks, right? I've been on physical penetration tests at a location for about three weeks, like not at the physical location, but in the area and we tested it for three weeks. It all depends on what we're trying to gather, how far we're trying to get into the joint and all that stuff. So, you know, and then you probably take a week or so to, to, you know, deliver your report and debrief and do all that stuff with the client. And yeah, that's about it. And that's it. That's pretty much it. So I want to say thank you so much for checking this out. You, you guys know where to contact me. Hopefully you subscribe to the channel. You know, my name is Patrick Gorman or InfoSec Pat. My email is pat at infosecpat.com. And if you haven't already, go visit infosecpat.com. And that's it for today. So happy St. Patty's Day. Have a beautiful day. Stay safe. Don't get too drunk. But I will because I got my green tea. Thank you. Have a beautiful day. Ciao.